Ooh. Here are all my Bitcoins. I <laughs> know. Nah. Seriously, imagine if we had to walk around and these were our coins. I like my shirt. What's going on, everybody? This is Simon from W3MCT. Glad you guys can be here. So today we're doing a video a little bit different, right? So I'm not screen sharing. Um, you guys are going to look at my ugly face. Um, and I didn't shave. And I need to shape up, right? So, but I did put on a new shirt and some deodorant, right? But you guys can't smell my deodorant. But can you see the new Bitcoin shirt? What do you guys think about the shirt? Let me know if you like it or not. Um, let's get this hanger out of here. Uh, we should probably have some cooler stuff for you guys to look at and whatnot. And that's my fault. Why would if I did this? Well, bam, is that better? <laughs> so, okay, today's video is going to be an important one. All my videos are important, right? Um, I really try to share as much game as I possibly can with you guys. Um, all for free. My channel sucks, right? It gets no advertisement dollars. Um, I get no affiliate money. Um, so yeah, and I'm still here, um, still providing content to everyone, anyone that was part of the helium, you know, uh, early days, right. I'm still mining. I'm getting IOT tokens. Now, um, I have a freedom fi. I'm contemplating setting up the 5g, uh, mobile, but, um, I'll make another video about that. If anyone is interested, let me know. Um, in the comments section. But today is a reminder video of what you need to do so you can interact with the blockchain. And one of the first steps for anyone that is coming to this space, whether you're brand new to the space or you are a seasoned veteran in the space, right? You've been around for a while. We all need to understand the most important thing, right? So the reason why I'm bringing this video back to the attention of the masses is because I had a good conversation um, with a colleague of mine about hardware wallets, about the ledger uh, recovery feature and what that looks like on the back end, um, the differences between hardware wallets and some of the you know technology differences uh, between one wallet over another wallet. And um, during that conversation, uh, it was just interesting because that individual w didn't have all the information, right? So it, it was funny because it started off with like, I didn't know what I was talking about to we're going back and forth, clashing and, and questioning and this and that and reading the white paper and then me explaining the terminology to then uh, both of us just having a super, super engaged conversation. Um, he was asking some amazing questions and we really got to a place where uh, we've actually become closer um, as acquaintances and I consider him a friend now. Uh, hope, you know, so in, in, in having that conversation, it was, you know, my brain was just like light bulb. I wonder how many other people may be thinking something similar, right? So let me go back and, um, refresh my brain on this, on all of, in hardware wallets, right? And let's, um, let's share this with you guys. So, um, I just had a birthday and my family knows how much I love uh, Web3 blockchain cryptocurrency that I was gifted this beautiful set here where, um, you know, we just got a whole bunch of different token collectors. So we have the, you know, infamous Bitcoin token, right? Um, we have another Bitcoin one, but this is just uh, silver. Okay, uh, we have the, uh oh, let's see if I can get this out. All right, uh, we have the, the, the meme of the century, right? The Doge, 
okay? Um, it says Doge to the Moon. I don't know if you can see it or not. All right, it says Doge. It says to the Moon up there. It says to the Moon, and then it says Doge Coin, right? Um, and it has a rocket ship on there with the Doge symbol. I know it's kind of hard to see with the reflection, right? And then we have at the back. It says uh, Wow, right? Um, and it says please mine very rich very much coin uh how money um so crypto <laughs> and it just has that right so you know uh so the doge the doge is a significant part of this ecosystem and it just really shows the power of collaboration and community um, we have another coin here. This is the uh, this is the Ethereum Classic. Yes, it's the Ethereum Classic. It says decentralized Ethereum Classic open source right here, right? Uh, and then on the back, it just has the you know uh, binary zeros and ones, um, and and the image. Now on the top here, okay. On the bottom left, right, we have the best kept secret, which is Litecoin, right? This is the best kept secret most people don't know about. Litecoin will become the uh, blockchain for businesses. All businesses will transact uh, using Litecoin, especially with the MWeb Mimblewimble feature that Litecoin has, which basically allows you to transact without showing your bag, right? So when you go to the when you go to the store and you use your debit card, um, the the clerk, the the the, the um, how you call it, the uh, person that does the reg the register the the register person, oh my god, the cashier, right, or the store owner, right, whoever is looking at the transactions, they won't know what's in your bank, right? So when you go buy something at the store, the cashier is not is not is not going to sit there and be like, "Oh snap, you have $10" or "Oh snap, you have 100 grand" or "Oh snap, damn, I didn't know we had millionaires in our town," right? Or "Oh snap, you have 5 bitcoin," right? Or "Oh snap, you only have 0.1 bitcoin" or whatever or you know what I'm saying? So when you transact with the blockchain and especially with bitcoin, uh, people can see your bag. So understanding how to uniquely uh, transact and interact with the blockchain is extremely important right now. And that's one of the things that we teach at W3MCT. We go over the various ways and the multiple strategies of how you can safely uh, interact and transact out of your cold storage wallet. We have a strategic process and steps you should take to do it the right way so it protects you from um, those that will try to take advantage of it, right? And take advantage uh, of you. But this is Litecoin, the best kept secret. Um, such a great blockchain, such a great uh, use case, and just fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Uh, this one right here, you know, this came in a set. I'm not a big fan of Cardano. Ada, everybody likes, you know, a lot of people that I know likes it. Uh, Charles Hoskins, you know, he's doing what he's doing over there, Cardano. And, you know, I really hope that um, whatever they're building, you know, becomes uh, a success, right? Because they've been going at it for a very long time. Um, Charles is, is this very a smart individual. I believe, he, you know, he was one of the early developers for Ethereum. Uh, so, you know, he's got the, the mindset, but it seems like there's something lacking with Cardano. Um, and um, but this video is not about that, so I'm not going to get into that, but it got the coin for it. And then the last one is another another coin, another uh, project. I don't think people really talk about or give it um, much credit, but it is a uh, file coin. Right. So this is file coin. Um, and this says power easily, um, are our mine. Everyone has computer power. Uh, I like that. Everyone does have computer power. It's a file coin, a logo there. And, you know, this is about a decentralized storage 
So learn more about Filecoin. But, you know, I was just super stoked when they gave me this gift. And I just absolutely love it. Um, you know, and, you know, just put it in the office and just keep it, keep it there for, you know, when people see it, it is a, you know, a talking, a talking piece. And, you know, it, it's a collect collector's items for, for myself, right? I'm just, I'm just, you guys don't understand, like, I'm just a fanatic when it comes to this new technology, innovative technology. It really is amazing. And I'm just glad to be a part of it. Um, and I'm just glad that years ago, I took the steps to learn about this technology. And many of us that's here uh, building and grinding and learning during the bear market, we really are going to be the uh, future experts and uh, space leaders, right? So, you know, m I may not be making content every single day on my channel, but that doesn't mean I'm not working on Web3 projects. It doesn't mean I'm still not working on my company, uh, creating edu educational content, recording, I mean, just and setting up my studio. So please stay tuned. I know um, I've been going at this slow. Uh, please be patient with me. You know, I really wanted to, I really want to make this right. Um, I really want to be super knowledgeable for you guys at the same time. And I really want to make a name for myself in this ecosystem. And that's why I attend uh, conferences, why I attend uh, job fairs, uh, I attend uh, hackathons. Um, I'm very engaged and interactive in many, many um, different projects and protocols. I've, I've helped and volunteered for the graph for Helium, for Gitcoin, for Algorand, for Flow, for Learn Web 3, for Blockchain Educational Network, for EYL University, for Recession Proof, um, for I was vice president of the Crypto Club for uh, Earn Your Leisure uh, University. I mean, just, and, and right now I'm an executive board member for Recession Proof EYL. Uh, RPX also. Um, we have an event coming up October 19th, Him 500, also known AK uh, Marcus Barney and Sydney will be blessing us with their presence. We're going to go over wealth building and wealth standards. So you can get your tickets to come to the event. I'm chairing the event. So I'd really appreciate if you can come out and support the DMV chapter. Um, we have something fantastic for you. Uh, the event will be recorded, but you won't be able to see it right away. Remember, this is an opportunity for you to network with your peers, to collaborate with others, and to really get the answers to the questions that you've been have. So to all my fellow entrepreneurs out there, to my fellow business owners, or just someone that's just up and coming, trying to figure this thing out in life, and you're just, you know, you're like, you know, I just, I just want to talk to somebody else. This is the place to be. This is where you want to be. This is the room you definitely 100% want to be in. So if you are local to the DMV area, or if you want to travel, it's open to everyone. You can get your ticket um, at, uh, for, for Recession Proof. I'll put a link uh, to the tickets in the description below this video so you can watch it. But for all of, all of you uh, Recession Proof members, go to the DMV chapter chat and there will be a link there. Please get some, uh, get some tickets yourself and go, you know, go, go, go give it out. Right. So I'm buying, um, I will be purchasing a, a few extra tickets and I will be giving away those tickets on my YouTube channel. So if you want a chance to come to the event, right? But you may not have the funds, subscribe to my channel. Um, I will do the giveaway on Tuesday, all right? This Tuesday coming up and you have to be present for the video. Um, I'm most likely going to do a live, uh, a, a live event um, going over my webinar. You're gonna have to watch the webinar and you're gonna have to be able to prove that you'll be able to show up and actually use the ticket. The last thing I want is for someone to win these tickets and not use it and not show up, right? So it's gonna be an awesome, awesome event. Um, so I really, 
really think you guys are going to enjoy it. So that being said, let's get to the video. This video is available for everyone, and you couldn't do this without the support from W3MCT.com. W3MCT.com delivers the future to you. We're here to help you with Web3 marketing, collaboration, and training. And before you can interact and earn on the blockchain, you need to first understand about digital asset security. We all want to become millionaires, right? We all want to uh, to be part of that moon, right? We all want to be part of that 0. 0.0001 to $1, right? Makes us to millionaires overnight. And I, and I challenge you and I say, man, that's awesome. I'm not here to tell you that that's a crappy strategy or it's a bad idea or that won't happen or it's a lottery move. Like I'm not here to discourage you. I'm, I'm here to say, yeah, that's awesome. And I, I, I hope that it happens for you. I really, really do. And not just you, for me too, right? I'm in a couple of plays. I would love for that to happen. But now we got to have some real conversation behind this, right? Because um, what happens if you, what happens when or if it actually comes true? Are you really prepared? Like, are you like, like say for example, right now, like say if you had a, a you know, a couple thousand dollars, and it ends up running, you know, and it turns to six figures, right? High six figures. Do you have the necessary knowledge right now to protect those funds? What are you doing with those funds? Are you keeping it on an exchange, right? Um, are you saving your seed phrase on your private key on your Google Drive or your iCloud where it's 100% vulnerable to, to hackers? right so how confident are you in your own knowledge that you know what to do when you become a millionaire and it's okay if you don't know and it's okay if you're if you're like damn simon i didn't even think about it like that that's exactly why i want to make this video and that is why you need to have this in place before the next bull market arrives, okay? And that's why I know it's super boring, right? But let's just set up, let's just set up our foundation right now. So then like when, when, when the bull market comes and, and those coins, you know, some token or some projects, 10X, 100X, 1000X, 10,000X, like whatever percentage gains that you get, at least you're like, yo, I went through the training, I understand how to protect myself. I have peace of mind. I'm comfortable knowing that these large amount of funds are sitting safe in my wallet. So what is a wallet and why do you need it? So there are multiple types of Web3 blockchain cryptocurrency or also digital asset wallets. So there are mobile wallets, right? So these are wallets that you would download the application from like the Play Store or the App Store and you would put it on your smartphone. And they're called mobile wallets or mobile-based wallets. And then we also have web-based wallets, right? So web-based wallets are also browser-based wallets. So those are wallets that you'll see um, on the top right of your browser. And if you're using something like Google Chrome, you can get Chrome extensions. So the famous um, browser-based wallet is MetaMask. Now MetaMask wallet is available. Um, it was set up originally for the Ethereum blockchain, but now MetaMask has expanded to a wide range of blockchains. You can use MetaMask for Polygon, uh, Arbitrum, Optimism, Solana, um, you know, just just all the different blockchains now, right? You can use MetaMask. But what is, what is MetaMask, right? So MetaMask is a web-based wallet. So when you go through the process of creating a MetaMask wallet, you're going to be asked to, well, write down this thing called a seed phrase, right? So the seed phrase are either a set of 12, 
18 or 24 words. And those words are your lifeline. It is literally the one thing that protects you from losing your digital assets. And it's the one thing that allows you to gain access to your digital assets from multiple locations, right? Because when we use the blockchain, well, the blockchain is an internet-based technology, right? So all of these different computers, also known as nodes, right, are connected to the internet across the globe. And each node or computer, right, has storage, right? And it stores the blockchain, right? What is the blockchain? Well, essentially, it's just all of, it's, it's just everybody's information, right? So it's everyone's information on the internet. And it's, it's downloaded on all the different nodes across the world. So when you need to gain access to certain data, like say you want to know what's the balance of your Ethereum in this wallet, right? So you would look the wallet public address. You can use something like Etherscan or some other blockchain explorer to search the wallet address. And then when you search the wallet address, it will let you know the current balance and all of the transactions on the blockchain that that wallet is associated with, right? So that's the cool thing there. So then the next thing you also have are desktop and uh, desktop applications. So you can actually um, download a application uh, that will allow you to set up a wallet on your computer. Um, Litecoin has a Litecoin node and wallet application. So the cool thing about that is you can support the Litecoin blockchain with a node. I wrote an article at lookintolitecoin.com. You can go check out that article uh, for more information on how to set up a node on Win Windows. It's super, super easy. But when you set up the node, it also gives you the option to set up, you know, um, your wallet. And then so that wallet is a little bit different, right? So this wallet is something that's connected to the computer. You will have your seed phrase, the storage every somewhere, anywhere, and then you can interact with the blockchain using that wallet, or essentially you can have people send you funds or you can send funds out of that wallet if you choose to be. However, that wallet is online. And then there's another thing. Another thing called a hardware wallet, also known as cold storage, right? And no, I don't mean a freezer, but it is kind of similar to cold storage because when you use a freezer, a freezer is, some, is a place where you would put something and your goal is to essentially freeze it for a, um, you know, a for, for a decent time, right? To, into the foreseeable future. And then, so you're like, hey, this item, I should be able to save it. I put it in a freezer and then I'll be able to get to it at a later date. And because I froze it, it should still be fresh by the time I defrost it and go back to that item, right? So you're securing that food in the freezer for a longer period of time. So that's where we have something called hardware wallets or cold storage. But we don't use cold storage because for a long period of time we use cold storage because it's not connected to the blockchain or the internet so we'll have you'll hear these terms hot wallet and cold wallet and hot wallet is something like metamask which is the browser-based wallet right or a mobile wallet something that can connect to the internet right it's hot right it allows you to interact with the blockchain now, with a hardware wallet called storage, it is not connected to the internet. A real secured cold storage really doesn't need to be online because everything is online with the blockchain. The goal is to save your private key offline, right? Off chain. 
That is the goal to have it really protected. And you don't save your private key or write it down in your iCloud notes or in your Google Drive or on your computer or desktop, right? You actually write it down on a piece of paper or notebook and you put it in a very safe location that you can get to. Some people even take the steps to get metal cards and literally engrave their seed phrase on this metal card that's fireproof, right? So they can get to it because like I said, your your private key <coughs> excuse me <coughs> your private key and your seed phrase is the most important thing and it's the only thing that allows you to gain access to your digital assets and the many different types of hardware wallets out there are available and one of the very first ones or the leader right is the ledger now the ledger hardware wallet looks something like this it's uh quite small right but it does does what it needs for it to do um right now this has the uh, micro micro usb and you connect to it turn it on uh this one's not uh charged uh right now i don't believe so yeah it's not charged right so now, but the thing about the ledger and this one, I didn't like the buttons right here. These two buttons, um, it was just annoying to interact with. And then the screen was just really small. I just wasn't, uh, you know, I wasn't a big fan of it. Right. And I was just like, there's got to be other options because if this is the only thing available, um, I am not going to want to use it. So, but this is a ledger and this is a cold storage hardware wallet. Excuse me. And it's available. For anyone that's interested in using ledger however <clears throat> ooh, excuse me however ledger did it is kind of going through some issues right now because they just you know they, they added this new recovery feature that just rubbed people the, the wrong way um but stay tuned i'll make a video on that in my opinion and share my thoughts about it but basically um let's just say i'm not using ledger because of that feature capability whether or not it's opt-in or opt-out it doesn't matter they have the capability to do things that normally um you know was supposed to be it, it really just defeats the purpose of a cold storage hardware wallet and they kind of just um you know um yeah so anyway i'll make a video on that at a later date so that is ledger and then they have, um, you know, another really sophisticated wallet. I have the device downstairs, but it's the Grid Plus, um, the latest one. All right. It came in this big box like this. <clears throat> I don't know if it has a picture. No, it doesn't. But it came like this, came in this big box like this lattice one and you are able to uh, scan your hardware wallet so the cool thing is right so they give you these things called safe cards right and these safe cards um these safe cards are used to back up your account on the on the card and then to access the wallet on the card you insert the you insert the card into the actual hardware it looks like a little terminal thing right you insert your card into there and then you can access your funds on the wallet they gave us two different cards um and i really i test these um not to its full extent but this is another great tool super um not user friendly at all this is very very advanced this is not for the beginner all right the lattice the lattice one grid plus is not a beginner hardware this is for advanced experts in the space that really understand um what what they need to do with it okay so now this is one of the newer hardware wallets um that works with a mobile application that just has recently came out and it's called a uh, tangem tangem you gonna you may see a few other people talking about this one uh, right now and uh, I was lucky enough to get my hands on the tangent already so the tangent works like this right so essentially you will get a mobile application so you go to the Play Store the App Store and then you download a mobile app and the mobile app allows you 
uh, allows you to set up and create a wallet. Now, on the process of creating a wallet, you need to verify that you actually have a Tangem card. Um, and the Tangem card uses the NFC technology to scan it. So, and I even attempted to uh, scan the app with other NFC um, technology cards or, um, you know, just like, just a few other things I tried hacking, right? The reason why I did that is because I just wanted to make sure that it was 100% um, uh, 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 um, verifiable specifically on this card authentication. So each card comes with an account number, right? Account secure security key. And when you go to set up the wallet, it says the security key of the card, which is on the back of the card. I'm not gonna show you guys, right? But the security key is on the back of the card and it shows up on the wallet. So for you to access the wallet, you need to scan the card that correlates to the security key inside the app. And I attempted to scan um, the NFC technology with other NFC cards um, and just, uh, and even other uh, tandem cards, right? With a different security key. Um, and I got error messages, right? So that was a good sign, right? So immediately off the bat, you won't be able to um, hack into it with um, other NFC technology items. Um, it's a little bit more sophisticated than that, which is a good thing. Um, now, some of the cons about this is that, well, you need to always walk around and hold this app. Now, I will, I mean, wallet, I mean, card now will, you know, you, you will probably need to walk around with like an NFC protector or stopper because the last thing you want is to be able to walk around um, and people can still scan the card or I don't know if that if the mobile app hap happens to accidentally open and then you have this like in your wallet next to you or in the same pocket with your phone, you know, could you potentially scan and do something um, of that matter by accident, right? So <clears throat> that those are some of the other things that came to mind when I think about it. Um, another thing is that it, you know, you can, it's a multi-currency uh, hardware wallet. So you can add Bitcoin, Litecoin, those, or any other coins, there's many, many blockchains available for you to add to it. And um, <clears throat> it uses the NFC technology. Uh, so to sign the transactions and store and save your private key. So this is something that's quite interesting, right? But I, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say um, that those are all of my favorite and number one options. But my my number one option when it comes to hardware wallet is the SafePal hardware wallet. I am in love with SafePal hardware wallets. Super disclaimer, I am an affiliate partner with SafePal, okay? So if you're interested in purchasing a SafePal hardware wallet, please use the link at w3mct.com. It is an affiliate link. All you have to do is click on one of the SafePal uh, marketing pictures or advertising pictures in the, on my webpage. It will route you directly to the official um, affiliate partner site with SafePal. I've communicated with the founder, Veronica, of SafePal many, many times. She knows who I am, and I've you know, shared a lot of my um, ideas with SafePal, and this being one of them, right? Because before, you would get the SafePal, and you had the black uh, blank uh, back of the thing. And, you know, it's great and all, but you want to be able to um, personalize it, right? So I, I, I told them about this idea and it's really cool to actually see them implement this idea with, uh, with, with Clayton here. And um, it really, it's fantastic. Um, it, it's part of the hardware wallet and it really just makes it look nice and cool and sleek and just personalize it. It makes it totally different. And anyone that was actually, were able to get their hands on this one actually 
um, can get a uh, can get a exclusive numbered NFT that goes with it as well. I haven't received my NFT, but I will need to reach out to uh, Veronica and say, hey, um, can you send me the NFT? Because for whatever reason, I didn't get the NFT email for it. So, but the SafePal Harbor wallet is 100% air gapped. And um, so the way this works is that when you want to interact and, you know, with the blockchain um, and send somebody some crypto or send somebody some of your digital assets, uh, you will need to scan the QR code. So it's just an additional uh, security layer. So once the private key is uh, off, uh, uh, verified, right, um, and it authenticates the, the private key and it says, hey, let's just verify that you actually have the hardware wallet in hand, right? Because somebody could have your private key um, in a remote part of the world, somewhere far, far away, and access your digital assets, right? And that's what was happening um, across the blockchain. A lot of people were um, storing their seed phrase in a private key on their computer or their Google Drive or their iCloud, and people were, were getting that information. And then they were getting that information, um, setting up the wallet in... I mean, the private key in a new wallet and boom, accessing all of their funds. Well, SafePal said, hey, I know this isn't super, um, you know, people aren't going to like this, right? You know, but this additional layer of security is absolutely necessary. And so when someone wants to interact with the blockchain, SafePal says, hey, I'm going to create a QR code. And it creates a QR code and a nice little screen there. And then on your mobile phone, you say, I, you know, you need to scan it. And then your mobile phone creates a QR code, and then you got to scan it with the hardware wallet. So that additional security layer is super, super valuable and very important because it says, hey, you need to actually have the device in hand to confirm and sign the transaction. So even if you have the uh, seed phrase and private key, um, but you don't have the hardware device, you won't be able to transact out of these wallets, right? So that's why I really, really love SafePal. And it's important because look, if you really believe that you're gonna become a millionaire one day in the future, you're gonna want a device that's 100% focused on security. SafePal is so focused on security that they literally sacrifice marketing, all the glam, all the attention, and that's why they build slowly in the back end, right? And another thing, they make it super affordable, right? I had this conversation with Veronica and she was just like, why am I making a Harbor wallet for a hundred plus dollars? Yeah, I can make the screen bigger. Yeah, I can make it do, you know, make it look shinier and this, but the goal of hardware wallet is to say that everyone will be able to have one, right? Everyone will be able to purchase and interact with the blockchain. If this is truly a global uh, opportunity, right, in, in, in a, trans, a, a transitional time period, right, in human history, the last thing that, you know, creators want to do right now is make it so difficult that the transition can't happen because people can't afford it. So Veronica was just like, hey, we're going to make this $50, right? $50 is enough that everybody can afford, everybody can get one, and everyone will be able to have peace of mind and peace of security with their hardware wallet. And I couldn't agree with that like any anymore. That it is so true and so, so important. And because of that, that is why SafePal is my number one wallet of choice because this is the people's wallet. And um, you guys should definitely, definitely, you know, take some time and learn more about it. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching my video. If you made it until the end, put power of 50 in the comment section. So I know you made it to the end and then you will automatically be entered for the giveaway on Tuesday. And then so another thing, when you guys are interacting with the blockchain, please make sure to have multiple wallets, right? So 
you're not going to interact with the blockchain with just one wallet. You're going to have an exchange wallet. You're going to have a browser-based wallet. You're going to have a mobile wallet, and you're going to have a hardware wallet, right? So it's important to have multiple wallets. And in my next video, I'm going to explain how you can take the necessary steps so you can transact out of the wallet so people don't see your entire bag. Thank you for being here. My name is Simon. This is W3MCT. And today, we went over a little bit um, into digital asset security and protecting your million dollar future. I'll catch you guys on the next one.